Good day. We are the third group and we will be discussing about the module 4, Unfolding the Mental Self, Cognition, Memory, and Intelligence. But first, let's talk all about cognition. What is cognition? Cognition. Cognition is defined as the complex array of mental processes involved in remembering, perceiving, thinking, and how these processes are employed. It is an umbrella term to cover all higher order thinking processes. It is a crucial part of an individual's development process which influences behavior, just as how behavior also impacts it. To explain it more clearly, think of cognition as your brain doing cool stuff. When we're born, we react to things based on our senses, like touching or seeing. As we grow up, we start thinking more logically and dealing with trickier tasks in school. Cognition is like how our brain remembers things and make choices. Imagine going from simple math in grade school to tackling complicated problems in high school. That's our brain getting smarter. Cognition is what makes us do things, like cutting a piece of cake or reading a book. It's not just about what we do, it's also about how we think and understand stuff around us. In the past, people thought our behavior was just because of our surroundings, like a kid wanting to be a doctor because parents said so. But now, we know we're not robots. We have a say in how we act. We can look at what's around us, pick the best options, and decide what to do. So, it's like our brain is always working, helping us figure out life. Good day everyone, I am Mikaela J. Tita I of BSHM 1A. Memory. Memory is often leaked to a computer systems, where the processes of encoding, storing, and retrieving information happen continuously. These processes are employed in daily life. Memory can also be corrupted by various factors, both internal and external to an individual. Memory functions in three levels. The sensory, short-term or working, and long-term memory. The sensory memory is the level that allows information from the external environment to be perceived by an individual through senses. Second, short-term or working memory is where the information is temporarily stored where information is simultaneously remembered and it's in a readily available state typically from 10 to 15 seconds after one minute and the last is long-term memory it is often permanent and allows for repeated retrievals across situations Good day everyone, my name is Daniel G. Ramos and I'm going to tackle about the intelligence. Intelligence is defined in a number of ways. The term is referred to as individual capacity for understanding, learning, planning, and problem solving with logic, creativity, and self-awareness. Howard Gard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence process eight areas of human intelligence. First is the verbal linguistic Ability to analyze information and produce output that involves oral and written language. Next is logical mathematical. Ability to understand and answer mathem mathematical equations. Next is visual spatial. Ability to analyze gra graphical information. Next is musical. Ability to produce and make meaning different types of sound. Human learning. If cognition, memory, and intelligence are underlining mechanism that allow people to precise and apply information for daily adoption, then learn and the natural consequence of the of this mechanism. One such theory is a social cognitive theory, which emphasizes the value of the social environment. The nation of learning is underlined by nation of the self-efficacy and the woman agency. Self-efficacy is a depend is the extent people believe they can be confidently learn and master the particular skills. Apart from the self-efficacy, human agency is another valuable principle in the learning process, and they influence social groups in attaining benefits that can be experienced by many. And there are two strategies in the learning that students can use. First is deep learning. In deep learning, is the understanding of the information by creating significant meaning links across different concepts and how it can be applied in the practical ways. Second is the surface learning. In surface learning, students simply accept information presented to them and memorize them in, a, in an isolated and unlike manner. To adapt deep learning strategies, students can engage in the following habits. First is taking down notes. By taking down notes, students reinforce and retention and comprehension of ideas can relate to them to past information they have already stored. 
Second is asking questions during class session. Asking questions during class foster individual groups discovery through an active discussion between teachers and students. Third is creating cognitive maps. The essence of deep learning is the process of students making meaningful connections among different forms of information earned by the students and engaging collaborative learning activities with mentors and peers. And lastly, going beyond the mandatory course requirements you need to showcase, concept discussed in class, going on trips for an alternative learning experience, and engaging in other learning opportunities can greatly enhance the learning process.